<laughs> what I was hoping was that we would agree that um, something might have been able to complete, but you're 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 not you're not wrong. Um, well, it's a pretty important topic. I I I I would like you to concede. Let let I need to finish this because I'm blowing my agenda. Um, it, otherwise, I could just tell the church office I, I I can't conform to a syllabus. Okay, so let me let me attempt to move, and I think you'll see that this conversation is going to be every bit as as to the same point, actually. Um, because the, the subject of free will is on this point. Uh, I'm going to... I did hit record, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the question is, do I have a free will in my relationship with God? And the Lutheran position is no. You don't. You have a free will in almost everything else. Um, what Luther called civil righteousness. You you can choose to even be a good person, to live your life with your neighbor, friendly and open and generous. But that's not relationship with God. That's your community relationship. The question about whether or not you will turn to God is the spiritual one. And there, Luther and the Lutherans point to the scripture that Paul says, you were dead in your trespasses. And dead people can't be talked into getting up. They have to be woken up. Right? And then, then you can talk to them. Then you can persuade them to behave all kinds of ways. But when they're dead, they're going to lay there dead what caused me? Uh, you mean can, can you reject the yeah. wake-up call yeah. yeah that is that is the difference between again denominations um there are some people who teach in, in this category <laughs> christians teach that the the power of god is irresistible so he not only tells you wake up but be saved I don't know if they actually use that wording, but that's essentially it. Wake up and be saved. We say the wake up part, and but the, if you are saved, it is because you accept the gift. We allow what's called resistible grace. That's the difference essentially between Lutherans so, and Presbyterians, that as far as I know. So I have free will to reject. Only on the reject, yes. That's right. Only on the reject. You did not have free will to accept. Did God? Well, God has free will. We, we, we would never argue that God can't do anything he wants. So ask your question again. So this is the guy that gives you the one like way to get. That's right. And and what your only choice, that's what Tim is trying to see. What, what what are we getting at? Picture the beggar on the street. This is the normal stance of a beggar on the street, hands open. Your only choice is to do this. The rich man's walking down the street. You do not put out your hand. That's your only choice. In Lutheran th think. So everyone of God has a point who will accept. No, that's not what I said. <coughs> Clear. Be because according to the scripture that I don't have up anymore, God wants everybody to be saved. God wants everybody to come to him. The whole world. But and we, we have to argue with God on this point. Why did you make it an a resistible offer? And we 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 don't know the answer to that. We all we do is teach that it's resistible. 
So yes, God wants everybody to be saved. And to those who come to him, he will save. But I do not have an answer, really, for how can you reject that offer? Picture the beggar on the street with his hand. Why would you not put your hand out and take the gift? Scared. Scared? scared? Uh, well, or is it safe? But doesn't Satan exist even if I don't take the offer of the rich man? I mean, I don't know. You're, you're saying Satan Could explains it, why you don't take the gift. Right? Uh, Isn't that Luther's big thing? Satan gets I would hate to think that it's it's all in the devil made me do it category. <laughs> uh, because that, that's too simple. That, that's too simple. It's definitely saying, does Satan have an influence? Yeah, we, we say we Satan. We, Jesus. Yeah, well, you could just read something now. You could just throw yourself off that cliff and do it. Yeah. So, I mean, what it's supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we usually say there's three forces. Satan is one of them the world, and our flesh. Those all three conspire against you. So it, it might be just your natural surroundings, the community you're in, the world you live in, the job you've taken. I don't know what else you'd put in that category that would pull you away. It could be your own sinful nature, you, your own sin list, whatever that looks like, or it could be the devil throwing darts. And anyway, so when the rich man walks down the street, you si decide, well, at least not today. I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I've got some other things I want to do first. So I'll, I'll come back to this question later, perhaps. Anyway. It looks loving kindness towards us is to lead us to repentance. Yes. Um, but see, he desires all men to be saved. That's what we teach. All men are to be saved. But then we, we have to honestly say, but we know that not all men are. Yeah. So we have to we have to have an answer for that question. I we prefer the Lord's not, desire is for all men to be saved. That's right. No, I'm agreeing with you. Right. But but sometimes they're not. Like you're saying about the beggars, you know, take my hand, here's my heart. That's right. And in that case, we have the assurance that you are accepted. The rich man will never not, I got negatives there. The rich man will always put something in your hand. He will give you the gift if you stay like that. But for some reason, people, no, I refuse to take the gift. Now, the Presbyterians have a simpler answer for this. God chose them to be damned. That's the Presbyterian answer. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like God to me. No, it doesn't. And, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of, that's fair. And, and they, they have an answer for that. I'm not going to try to defend it. I'm just saying it, 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 in a sense, it's a simpler answer to this question. What, what, what I'm telling you is, what Lutherans do is just not concentrate on the negative. We recognize it's out there. And if you want to have a logical question about it, okay, we do have to address it. But what we want to say to the, to the, sin, to the sinner who recognizes they're a sinner, you use the word repentance. If you are coming in repentance, you are already in the believer category. Why would you come with repentance if you weren't a believer? Okay, so you're coming to God with a, with, well, with a repentant heart. What we say is the predestination of God guarantees you your salvation. God chose you from before the world ever existed. Rest in that assurance. That's the positive language. And we just won't deal with the person who doesn't take the gift. Yes. That's a, that's a difference in repetition. And we could, we could have a discussion 
about whether you really understand the nature of the sin you're talking about. But Jesus does not say that there is any limit on, on the forgiveness. He, he Well, he, tech, to be technical, he did say 77 times, or if you reverse the where, where the times is, it might be seven times, 70 times seven. It depends on how you read the Greek. So it's either 77 or 490. I don't know which, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but I'm joking. He, he, what he meant to say there was your forgiveness should be as unlimited as God's forgiveness. So, and what, and I like, a, I heard a preacher say, you should, you should forgive so many times that you lose track of counting. That's, that's how, so you can't count. It's, there's, there's no answer to that question. So now, but, but I do think, and I've noticed it in my own, you know, as we're going through confession over there, thoughts come into your head. And I think honestly with myself, you know, that's the same thought that was in my head last week. What am I doing? I, I think, I, I think that's a, I, I think that's a legitimate question, yeah. but let's, let's concentrate on the assurance part. Yes, it happened again. Yes, I really mean I want it to stop. Okay, that's fine. Now, okay. Now, I want to, I want to uh, discuss uh, this document so that we can move on. So. What we're saying in Lutheran theology is you, you didn't choose God. God chose you and gave you the faith to hold on to that gift. Where does that faith come from? Okay. God gives each man measure of faith. Okay, but 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 I we want to be I want to be a little bit more basic that down below. How how does God give? Let me notice that in the, the document, it says Article 5 of the ministry, that we may obtain this faith. So this is the how question. The ministry of teaching the gospel and administering the sacraments was instituted. For through the word and sacraments, as through instruments, the Holy Ghost is given. I've used this example before. Linda plays the piano. Linda is the musician. The piano is the instrument. They are kind of both necessary. You, I mean, you may have the, the song in your head, but without a piano, it doesn't come out. Right. And the piano sitting over in the corner by itself doesn't accomplish anything either. You need the musician and the piano to make music and so that's what's being described here the gospel the preaching of the gospel and that, by the way it's not just that whenever we read the bible in church whenever we say prayers that are biblically oriented when we sing hymns that are good biblical hymns that's the word coming out into the people and then of course the sacraments when we when we when we do the lord's supper these are instruments of faith is is what we're teaching that's what it's for now that doesn't mean that god can't work on his own but he what well, we call this the ordinary means this is how it normally happens the word of god does include the bible itself so you could have somebody just sitting in their own room reading the bible and and God comes to them, fine, that, that, that's completely appropriate. But what we're saying is it mainly comes, mainly, anyway, through word and sacrament. Yes, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, notice the Holy Ghost is given who works faith where and when it pleases God. God 
chooses to give people faith. We say it's a gift. And doesn't the gift giver choose when and where the gift is given? Well, that was a, that's back to the previous conversation. Um, the, the, the gift is available to everybody. Not everybody accepts the gift. Same, it's the same. Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, who are indoctrinated with the I know. That's kind of the big negative, isn't it? These people have not, they, they not only do they not accept Christ, they live in a community that is anti Christ. Now, how, how do we deal with that? Um, yeah. I have an Indian customer. He said his wife would rather die than wow. be His wife would rather die than become a Christian. That's pretty good love. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm just reminding you that you, there, no one will go to the Father except for me. Yeah, Jesus that's what he says. Um, is there anything in the scripture that gives the kid a provision after they die? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm going to think, I think the answer is no. There is no post-death opportunity. But I, I can tell you that C.S. Lewis got in all kinds of hot water on that exact point. In I, I don't know how close in your memory your last time you read the Narnia tales but there is a character in that last not last part of the chronicle is is a novel and the, the a person dies who was of another faith kind of like the hindu example and he has this interaction with the christ character known as aslan the lion he has this interchange and he comes out of it saved but it happened and it happened after death so here's a picture in one of his children's books of a post-death salvation. And as you can imagine, all whatever hit the fan, because what, what, what do you mean there's a post-death opportunity? Anyway, uh, so, but <laughs> um, uh, if you want, if you want the answer, I think I think I may do it. I may not do it justice. But essentially, my time and God's time are two different things. Our timeline, we we can picture time in our timeline, but we we don't know how God works beyond the timeline. And I think that's how Lewis um, addressed this. Who who are we to argue about? when God sees this person's character and decides on his salvation. From our timeline, it may look like it's after death, but I cannot explain. Uh, but I don't know. Let's not, let's leave it there because I don't really know enough about C.S. Lewis. Um, let, me, let me go into the next step because I need to get to good works. New obedience. We were accused Lutherans were accused of ignoring good works, even prohibiting good works. And, and we said, no, wait, it's, it's the other way around. Good works, the, the loving your neighbor flows out of salvation. So those with faith will do good works as a natural part of life. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to plan it. It's just going to happen. And that's what this says. Faith is bound to bring forth good fruits. And, and here is rather un-Lutheran sounding language. And that is necessary to do good works commanded by God. Well, I thought we weren't, we were not saved. Go ahead. If, if we are in Christ, you know, um, we are his workmanship 
created for the works in place that he prepared in advance for us to do. Very good. So if, if you're a Christian, you're just naturally going to do good works. Sure. Right. And that's what we say here. Is it, So to completely separate this from the question about how we are justified, how we are saved, it has nothing to do with that. We assume you are saved. That we, we know from the perspective of the confessions, we did that two articles ago. You are saved by faith, but, sorry, by grace through faith. That's the end of that discussion. Now, you're saved. You will do good works. And we promote those good works, and we even use the word necessary. It is necessary that you do them, but well, not as. Yeah. Wouldn't he be disappointed if he didn't do them? And and remove the Holy Spirit. None of you can do it. Tim is uh, Tim. When your daughters were growing up, were you ever disappointed in their behavior? Were you ever in the, even a moment of your worst day, thinking that you should take them down to the orphanage and get rid of them? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. See, that's the same way. That's the same way God would approach this. I'm not, he may be completely disappointed in what, what, how the day work out for you, but that doesn't mean you're not a child of God. You say anything about not being a child of God? You, it's not a logical extension of what I said. <laughs> God, God prepared the works in you. Wouldn't he be disappointed? He us to be. And it's disappointed when we don't. What, uh, so on a on this course at night, and I, I I always want to help this person, but I don't know how that I I myself like I'm supposed to be homeless. And I really want to get something like, like food, but I don't have enough money. So I just kind of walk away. And I, felt, and I felt bad about it. Yeah. Um. There's an endless number of works that we can do. Yeah, and got to got to enable. Yes. You can only you can only do what you want to do. But remember, this has nothing to do with your salvation. So we're not arguing that you become unsaved because you even if you intentionally pass over a good work, I, I decide consciously I'm not going to do it today. Not because I can't. Maybe I even could do it. I just choose not to do it. That the, that kind of sin does not remove me from from grace. Well, just be nice to that person. It's valuable as damn funny. You're really nice to the person. That's a good word. Right? Are you even acknowledging the person? Right. You're no one will be seen. Exactly. No one will be seen. Two pennies. Yeah, yeah. Two, two copper yeah. coins. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Give what you can. That's, that's another way to think about it. Anyway. This document ends this good works. It's a big paragraph. I'm not going to read through it. Essentially, it's this. The, the caution we give the believer is that it's kind of, uh, it's a temptation that is logical and likely that you, you, you hear in your mind, okay, I'm saved by grace through faith. And then you're also told, but you're supposed to do good works. Okay, so... I, I think in my mind of ways that I can be helpful to my neighbor and I'm living supposedly what the good Christian life is. And then I'm past it. And your mind begins to connect. Well, isn't God pleased with me? And they're calling it merit here. Be, be very careful. It's easy for the human brain to say, well, aren't I entitled now? Haven't I earned? Isn't there, don't, don't I get something for all this work I'm doing? All this, and you notice that now I'm, I've, see, I've turned it away. Now I'm talking about myself. all the work that I am doing. Doesn't God owe me something? That's right. That's right. And that's what they're warning about. Anytime merit raises its head, it's, it's sin. You're, you're supposed to do the works naturally. Not because God will give you a gold star and tell you you're a good little boy or girl because you did those, those things. 
Who wants to create mansions? Pardon me? Who wants to create mansions for us? Mansions, yeah. So people do a little show. <laughs> there are rewards and <laughs> he's he's pointing out that there are scriptures that tell us about rewards in heaven yes now are those rewards do you get a bigger apartment with a balcony you know an ocean view or the street side view which do you get i i honestly i don't have any idea what the rooms and the mansions look like and how they associate with the rewards. But it is true, rewards are mentioned in the scriptures. Now, one side of me says, well, isn't it enough that I'm there? I have a room in the mansion. Yeah. Uh, and I might, I might be able to say, yeah, that's pretty neat. But then I go and visit Tim's room and he's got, he's got the balcony with the sea view. And I said, "You're welcome to visit." I, I was going to say, "How did how did how did Tim get the balcony?" I I don't understand. Anyway, I I'm sure. You know when you're in it doesn't. I I I I agree with you, Bob. Yeah. I agree completely. I, I can't go to I'm not going to have time to go to the apartment anyway. I'm going to be worshiping before the throne. So that's, it's, it's not really, I don't really care where I sleep. Yes, Daniel. I think that physically, it's like, in this old place, I think it would be more like something inside of you. Okay. Like, for example, like, when I have an after home, I feel like, ooh, I feel good. I feel, feel good. good. Yeah, yeah, I feel good. That's, that's what I like. That's you know. That's that's some wisdom. I think you're probably right. I, I, I as Bonnie pointed out, in heaven you're not going to worry about physical things. I I I don't remember exactly what you're quoting, but essentially I I think we're on to something there. Let's. How it works. Yes, and there's and there are rewards. Yes. In right. Is a judgment of that's why we need forgiveness. <laughs> we can't do it, we don't we don't do everything we're supposed to do. Because divorce, but it's not really mean that we would say if you don't own divorce, we need to be used by Yeah. Um I'm trying to find the Lord's Prayer, and I'm not, I'm not finding it quickly, which is bothersome, but here it is. Um, okay, let's close this class with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, on the subject of... I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting.